Hi and welcome to the Cruising Aboard Chicories video series. We just completed a 46 hour uh, passage from Brunswick Landing Marina in Brunswick, Georgia to uh, West Palm Beach Inlet. And now we're anchored in uh, Lake Worth, just south of like Peanut Island, if you're uh, familiar with the area. And uh, prior to, of course, the passage, I did some weather um, forecasting and figured out exactly what our route would be and how long it would be and when we would leave and I thought it'd be a really cool to show you exactly what I go through but one of the things that I want to show you is how I calculate basically our comfort so I look at forecasts and I look at uh, wave period wave height and wave direction and let's just say it's three feet at 2.8 seconds and it's from 160 degrees. Okay, well, what does that mean? How does that relate to comfort on the boat? That's what this video is about and I'm gonna show you how to calculate basically cruising comfort. So stay tuned. The first thing we need for our comfort calculations is some data and I'm gonna get that from predictwind.com which is my preferred weather source. I prefer it because it has three forecast models that provide wave height, wave period, and wave direction. And all three of these data types are super important for us to do our calculations. For the examples going forward, I'm going to use three feet or one meter for all the calculations. So let's get started. I'm going to start with a three foot wave at three seconds. This is a one to one ratio between the height and feet in period in seconds. This is typically referred to as a square wave and is usually not very comfortable and I'm going to demonstrate why. I'm going to contrast that with a 1 to 2 ratio of height and feet to period in seconds which represents 3 foot seas at 6 seconds. The wavelengths on screen are accurate to scale and I want to talk about that just for a second. The 3 foot seas at three seconds have a distance between wave crests of just a little over 10 meters where the three foot seas at six seconds have a little over 41 meters between wave crests and so that makes a significant difference i'll show you later on in the video how that's calculated but the first thing you need to know is that this is accurate to scale along with the size of chicory that i'm going to demonstrate First thing I'm going to demonstrate here is wavelength and its impact on the pitching of a boat. So this three foot sea at three seconds has a 10.39 meter wavelength and that wavelength is shorter than the 14 meters that chicory is. So what happens is as chicory is in a wave the stern is first going to be in the trough as you're climbing the face of the wave. Once the longitudinal center of gravity passes over the crest, the bow is going to plunge down over that crest into the next trough. Because chicory carries less volume forward, with plenty of reserve buoyancy, but less buoyancy forward, she's going to plunge deeper in the bow than she was in the stern. Now let's contrast that pitching motion with the longer wavelength of 41 meters for a 3 foot seas at 6 seconds. Because the wavelength is nearly three times Chicory's length, the pitching motion is significantly decreased. So let's see what that looks like in total pitching. So for the three foot seas at three seconds, we look at 22.2 degrees pitch compared to 7.9 degrees for the three foot at six seconds. That total pitch is only half the story or maybe even less because how often you pitch has a greater impact on your comfort than the total pitch angle. To complete the calculations we've just done and the ones we're going to do right now, I use Swellbeat's linear wave calculator for all of my data. It is a great resource and it's just simply at swellbeat.com and I would suggest uh, using their tool. It's absolutely fantastic. So let me show you how this works. So you go to predictwind.com or whatever your favorite forecast model is and you put in your significant wave height in meters in the significant wave height, obviously the peak wave period in seconds, and then the water of uh, depth in meters. When you're routing your course, you probably know how deep a water you're in, so that's pretty straightforward. Just click calculate and it'll give you your mean wave length, which is super important, and wave celerity, which is the wave speed in meters per second. 
So let's go back to our first example of the three foot seas at three seconds. We got 22.2 degrees of pitch, and right now we're going to be going into head seats. So we're going to calculate the relative speed and pitch period based on that. So for going into head seats, we're going to add wave speed in meters per second to boat speed in meters per second. So we take our wave speed of 4.03 meters per second, which we got from swell beat, and then we convert our boat speed from knots that we normally see to meters per second, which is a pretty straightforward calculation. And then in this particular example, we end up with 7.28 meters per second as our relative speed. And the final calculation is to divide the wavelength of 10.39 meters, which we got from swell beat, by the relative speed of 7.28 meters per second, which we just calculated above. And we end up with 1.43 seconds between wave crests. So you're going to pitch, in this particular example, 22.2 degrees back and forth every 1.43 seconds. That is not going to be comfortable. Let's reverse our direction now and have following seas. So we're going to calculate the relative speed and pitch period in that scenario. And the difference here is for following seas, we subtract boat speed in meters per second from wave speed in meters per second. You'll see this makes a huge difference because our wave speed of 4.03 meters per second and our boat speed of 3.25 meters per second are so close. So we end up with a relatively small number at 0.78 meters per second. Then when we divide that wavelength of 10.39 meters by our relative speed, which is so much lower now of 0.78 meters per second, we get 13.32 seconds between wave crests, pitch period. Now I don't necessarily want to pitch at 22.2 degrees, but having it at 13.32 seconds is a whole lot better than less than two seconds. So now let me show you uh, the contrast of the three foot at six seconds. So we're going to put all that information in now, and we're going to calculate it, and you'll see we have the 41 meters that we've been talking about. But the wave speed now is eight meters per second, which is double what it was before. Once again, we're going to subtract boat speed uh, from wave speed, and we're going to take our 8.05 meters per second and subtract that uh, by 3.25 of our boat speed to get 4.8 meters per second of our uh, relative speed. We divide the wave length by our relative speed and get 8.66 seconds between wave crests. So for a 7.9 degree total pitch uh, every almost 9 seconds, that's a nice ride. So we just finished the calculations and um, I gave you some numbers, but what is that relate to as far as comfort. So sometimes it's helpful to role play. So I'm going to do that for you right now. So the three foot at three seconds from head seas was the worst sea condition and that was 22.2 degrees of motion in 1.43 seconds. So let's role play that. I'm sitting in my pilot house seat. I'm sitting erect at 90 degrees. To estimate my angle I'm going to go all the way to 45 and then go like half that distance. So this is about uh, 22 and a half degrees. And I'm going to move through this motion um, from 90 to 22, back to 90 in less than two seconds. So one 1,000, two 1,000, one 1,000, two 1,000, one 1,000, you get the idea. So you can see that if you were to do that hour after hour underway, that'd become very, very tiring. So let's contrast that to the three foot at six seconds following seas, which was about 7.9 degrees, which is about, let's say this much. And I'm doing that over almost nine seconds. We'll just say eight, we'll round down. So it'd be one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000. Very slow motion, very light angle. You can see you could do that forever. If you were doing that for three days straight, you'd be wonderful. So I'm just trying to show you the contrast. And if you do the math and you're trying to kind of figure out in your head, what is this gonna feel like? Role play. We've covered head seas and following seas, but we haven't covered any angle different than that. So what do we need to do? We need to adjust the speed based on the direction of travel. 
So let's do those calculations now. Chicory is headed at 270 degree heading due west. We have following seas coming from 130 degrees. And we want to calculate the difference between our uh, direction of travel and where the waves are coming. But we need a reciprocal of 270 degrees because we need to have the seas and the boat coming from the same angle. So that basically ends up being 90 degrees. We take 130 degrees minus 90 degrees and that gives us a 40 degree difference. Now we can do that speed adjustment with a little bit of trigonometry on that 40 degree angle. So I use Carbide Depot's trigonometry calculator, which is great. I can just take the wavelength uh, on side B of that 41.56. I put angle A at uh, 40 degrees, which is the angle difference between the boat's travel and the wave. And then I get 54.25. In our final speed adjustment, we take the 41.56 original wavelength and divide it by the 54.25 new wavelength, essentially, um, via our mode of travel at uh, 270 degrees west. So let's just add that into our diagram, and we have a total of 0 0.76 multiplier of speed. So we take our boat speed of 3.25 meters per second, multiply it by that, we get 2.47, and then we add that into our old formula. So we take our wave speed of 8.05 meters per second with our new speed of 2.47 meters per second, and that gives us the uh, relative speed of 5.58 meters per second. Once again, we divide that out, and we end up with 7.44 seconds between wave crests. So that new 7.44 pitch period is compared to the old 8.66. So it's a little bit shorter, but you can see how your direction of travel compared to which way the waves are coming from affect uh, the virtual speed of your boat and how often you're going to be going over a crest. That's the last calculation I'm going to show. So this is going to end this video. And while you enjoy this beautiful picture of Chicory as we left Brunswick Landing Marina on a 46-hour passage to West Palm Beach that our friend took, I'm just going to thank you again for viewing, subscribing, commenting, and liking my videos. I really appreciate it, and uh, if this was helpful, that's great. Leave me a comment and tell me what you thought.